Okay, let's talk some books. So this is going to serve as my reading wrap up for the month of March, as well as my March of the Mammoth wrap up. And I'm just going to talk about all the books that I read and finished in the month of May, what I rated them. And if I haven't quickly reviewed and given my thoughts on them, I will do that as well. So I am going to go ahead and start with the one and only book that I DNF'd this month. And this was actually a book that was not on my TBR, but I thought I was going to sneak in at the end of the month and I would have had time to do so. But I I ended up deciding not to read it at all. And that book is Blood Red by Gabriella Punce. And this book was one that I got in my subscription box from um, an indie publisher, and I was really looking forward to it. However, I ended up DNFing this book, not because it wasn't well written. It actually is well written, and it is a very interesting story about a woman who is divorced and who decides to just sort of go out, enjoy her autonomy, and just live her life and do whatever she wants. And it basically includes, you know, adult activities, illegal substances, and maybe even rock and roll. We'll put it that way so that I don't get censored. I think what turned me off about this book is that it has some things in it that I personally find kind of gross, um, including her own phobia, uh, which is not, I think, a phobia for myself, but it was just one that described. I was like, maybe that is a phobia or it doesn't make me afraid, but it definitely grosses me out. And it was brought up and described over and over and over again. And I was like, I can't do this. Um, and then there were other things in this as well that just weren't to my taste and just weren't working for me. Um, and normally in a very short book, I would say, okay, well, I can suffer through anything. But I did flip through a couple other pages in the book, like at different points and read a page. And every single time there was something in it that I, I just honestly found kind of gross. And so I just wasn't willing to do that and gross myself out, even for just like 180 some odd pages. I did also DNF a second book, and that is a book that I DNF'd very early in the month and was on my TBR and was a mammoth. And that was The Garden of Seven Twilights. And that was a book that I DNF'd because it had a trope that I don't personally like, which is like people just sitting and talking. Um... I knew that was going to be a troupe that was in the book because I knew that it was based on um, the Decameron. It was kind of like a modern day version of it in some ways. And um, I do like embedded narratives, and that is a large feature of the Decameron. And I did discover while reading this book that it's not that I mind people sit around and talking. It just very, it depends on what they're talking about. So in the embedded narrative in The Garden of Seven Twilights, they are talking about basically what I think is going to turn into some sort of mysterious jewel heist. That part of the story was very interesting and I wanted to hear more about because it also seemed to slowly be starting to implicate everyone else who's in the main plot of the story. The part that I didn't like was um, that after they discussed the um, sort of jewel heist, if you will, they would go and then sit down at dinner or go for a walk or something like that and have more discussions. But those discussions largely had to do with politics, sometimes touched on things about how stories are made and told, which was interesting. But the other elements of it, I just really didn't like. And I started to find the book pretty boring. Um, and since it was a mammoth, I have learned with mammoths that even though you usually need to read a decent portion of them to know what the book is like um, and what it is about, I also know that if you force yourself to keep going, you can end up in a major reading slump. And since this was the first book that I picked up, I really just didn't want to go there with that. And so I did end up DNFing that book. Uh, this month, I had no books that I rated one star, which is nice, but I did have a book that I rated two stars, and that was The Waters by Bonnie Jo Campbell. I was reading this book as part of a family book club, and while I would not say that the book was bad, that's not what a two star means to me, I would just say that I personally just didn't like it. I thought it was kind of an oddball story, um, not always that well paced. I found it um, kind of slow at times, and that the story was just kind of all over the place. Yeah, I guess I just really didn't connect with any of the characters in the book and so that just kind of made it a little difficult to want to keep reading and go through and at the end of the day like I finished the book so we could discuss it as a book club read but like I said I just I just didn't end up being a big fan of it so 
Okay, sorry if there was an angle and definitely there was a lighting change. It's been raining and pretty dark out all morning and just now the sun came out and things were getting really bright. So I had to adjust a couple of things so that my camera wasn't like trying to overcompensate for my shirt suddenly becoming blinding white. Anyway, moving on with the books, um, I had three three star uh, reads this month and the first book I'm going to talk about is Forever Amber by Kathleen Windsor. This was also a mammoth off my TV. BR and I did finish this one and um, it was good. Um, that's what a three star means to me that it was good. It was, you know, okay. It wasn't like the best thing I've read, but I didn't dislike it. Um, I didn't hate it. Um, I just thought it was okay. And the main reason that I think kind of kept this book from feeling better for me was uh, the character of Amber. She just was a character that frustrated me and I felt like was kind of flat. So I did not think her characterization worked well. I don't actually have to personally like a character in a book to think um, the character works in the book or that the book overall works well, but the characterization does still need to be well done. And there were just things about her character that I felt were implausible. And you can watch some of my um, past weekly wrap ups, um, especially towards the beginning of the month where I talk about this book. I think I talk about it for a couple of weeks and you can hear more about um, why she just wasn't my favorite and why I didn't particularly like the characterization in this book. And that's the main thing that at the end of the day ended up making it a three star for me. Otherwise, I think it had potential for a four star, but yeah, not not as written. Um, but this is a historical romance. And if you like historical romances, you like really long books, you might like this book. The next three star read for me this month the Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. This was a book that I read for a read-along that I co-hosted on YouTube, and um, I spent a lot of time tabbing this book, and we had a wonderful discussion that you can go back and look at and get my full thoughts on this book, as well as many other people's. And um, I just also thought this was okay. Um, there were a lot of elements in this book that I thought had potential to make it great, but overall, um, I wasn't a huge fan of Oscar uh, Wilde's writing style as a whole. Um, I think my ending thoughts on that was I could see why he's a playwriter and I feel like he probably writes plays better. So I'd potentially read a play by him. I'd certainly go see a performance of one of his plays. But there are times where I think very unintentionally this read and felt like a play in terms of I needed an actor to fill out the emotional and character gaps that he was leaving. So that kind of kept it from being better. However, at the same time, I gave it a three because there are a lot of interesting elements in this book that would be worth studying. So I do see and get why it is a classic. And I could also see why some people would really like the themes and discussions in this book and would rate it much higher than I did. But personally, for me, it was just okay. And the third and probably most controversial <laughs> Three star that I am giving this month goes to Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell by Susanna Clark. I had very high hopes for this book. I have read Paranisi by Susanna Clark, and I was really, really hoping to like Jonathan Strange, which is her debut novel. But I have to say, at the end of the day, it felt like a debut novel. Um, this book, in my opinion, is just way too long. I buddy read this with Coda, um, who also has a booktube channel, who I will link below. And he does a lot of sprints on his channel, but he's out. Oh, does a lot on Instagram as well. Honestly, if it wasn't for Coda, I don't think I would have made it through this book. I think I would have also DNF'd to this mammoth. And Coda kind of felt the same. We it, we were on the struggle bus together at keeping one another company. Um, and it was hilarious and fun to do so. But the my main issue with this book is it's too long. It's too tangential in topics for me. Um, to me, this is an example of maximalist writing where it's like every subplot that could possibly exist got a page at least or a footnote. I started to dread the footnotes in here. Um, and which is a shame because there's a lot of potentially good things in this book. There is a lot of humor, especially at the beginning. There um, is a lot of interesting elements in this book. It can be very atmospheric at points. It can be very um, tense at points. And um, but the pacing can also be very off at times. I would say that this is a book that I would recommend to someone who likes tangents and subplots in their book. Kind of like if you enjoyed the tangents that Victor Hugo throws into his writings, like Waterloo or The Sewer System in Les Mis, you will enjoy this. She goes on tangents in a very similar fashion. 
that I think people could relate to because there are people who like that in writing. Um, all those things taken together, very long book, such a shame that it was a three star read. However, I do still like Susanna Clark. I did still like her writing throughout this um, for the most part, except for the parts that were slow. So I would still read more by her, but I would say that between the two, Paranese is the better book. And I'm not surprised that it's a later book of hers or her second book, um, because it seems like all of the elements that she did well in this this, she was able to take into another shorter story. I had one four star read this month, and that was The Snow Child by Ewan, Owen Ivy. Um, and this was a really surprising book for me. Um, one, I thought for some reason that this book was going to be scary. It was not at all. Um, I thought it was a really well toed retelling of a myth. And there were just so many beautiful elements in this. It was it was very sad. I do have to say that, um, especially the beginning of the story. Well, no, the beginning, the middle and the end. Like I cried multiple times in this book. Not ugly cry, but I did definitely cry and like had to control my crying a bit towards the end. Um, it is a very sad, moving story throughout. It's I would say a slow paced book, but a well paced book. And I really, really enjoyed this. I was not expecting to enjoy this book as much as I did, partially because I for some reason thought it was going to be scary. It's not. <laughs> and I'm like a huge scaredy cat. There was nothing in this story that I found scary. Um, but it it was just a nice touch of magical realism. You never quite knew whether what was going on was magical realism or not. Um, and it's it's just a really moving story about grief and relationships and found family. And yeah, yeah, I would just I, I can't recommend this book enough. It was a really, really well done story, and I am glad I read it and got to it. Um, probably the only thing that is keeping this from being a five star book for me was I just don't see myself rereading this book. It wasn't something that grabbed me and made me go, oh my gosh, I want to put this down and pick it up again. I want to read it again next year. Um, I really liked it. It's a really good book. I just, I just didn't love it. I didn't, you know, it didn't spark joy, if you will. <laughs> And finally, in what turned out to be a kind of meh month all overall, kind of averaging around a three, um, I don't know, I'll put what my average is up at the end, I did have one book that ended up being my saving grace and was a five-star read, and that was The Radium Girls by Kate Moore. Um, I listened to this um, probably all but the last 70 pages on audiobook, and this was an excellent book. This is a nonfiction that tells the story of um, the Radium Girls, um, who worked at a couple of different companies. She covers a couple of different companies, but these are girls who worked in factories painting um, the faces of watches um, with radium paint so that they would glow in the dark. And it talks about how it moves from a time period where people thought that radium was healthy for you to the company eventually uncovering that it is radioactive and dangerous and to their covering that up and the girls experiencing the consequences and trying to survive the consequences as well as find justice. Um, I think Kate Moore does an excellent job of not making this a dry read. She very much um, presents it with the facts of what was going on, but really takes the time to tell the women's story. And she says in her author's note, I firmly believe that when you're entrusted to tell someone else's true story, whether as an author, actor, or director, you have a responsibility to do justice to those whose story it is. And I completely agree with that. And I think she did an amazing job. And she wanted to write this book because when she heard about the story, all she could find is like the scientist um, sort of thoughts and journals about this story or newspaper articles, you know, or things that just talked about the facts. But she felt like there wasn't anything that talked about the girls or the women themselves because they were actually girls. They were like in their teens, like their mid to early teens for some of them when they were painting these styles. She just felt like there were no stories that talked about the girls themselves and told their stories in their voices. But she found there was a lot of information, their diaries, newspaper articles, their families, and other places to get 
their actual words on page. And that's what she seeks to do with this book. And I think she did an amazing job. I think everyone should read this partially because it, you know, it's just carrying on these women's lives and their stories. Um, because particularly if you live in the U.S. Um, and other parts of the world, um, what these girls went through and then ended up doing to seek justice actually improved. Um, impacted a lot about how we today work with radium, as well as labor laws in the U.S. and around the world. So um, I think personally that this is an important book, but more so than that, that these are important stories to hear. So those are all the books that I read in the month of May and finished. However, that is not everything that was on my TBR. So I do want to talk about the couple of things that you may be like, remember there being other books on the TBR. And there were. There was one March of the Mammoth book that I did not get to, and that was Once an Eagle by Anton Meyer. I actually picked up this book in the month of March multiple times to read and finish it, and I just wasn't interested. I read maybe the first 50 pages of the book, found it a bit slow paced, found that they were just really sticking heavily to talking about, you know, the old war stories, that kind of thing. And I think partially because I had just read a military um, book the month before, which was Black Hawk Down, I wasn't really particularly interested at the time getting into another book like that. The um, other mammoth um, that I had that was also on my TBR is Arabian Nights. And this was um, a book that very early on in the month I decided was too confusing to read straight through and sort of binge read, and that it held up better to reading at a slow pace. So I have spent the month just reading this about 10 pages at a time. Um, I am currently on page 380, so I made it about a third of the way through the book, um, mostly during the month of March. So I'm not mad about that. Um, and I am really enjoying this story, and I am enjoying it at the pace that I am reading it. So um, yeah, so this will be carried over and I will continue reading it in April at the same pace, and which will probably then bring this book into May. So this will be read at the pace of um, three months. So I hope that kind of shows how I get through longer books in some ways during the March of the Mammoth. Um, I had, you know, two books, Jonathan Strange and Forever Amber, that I picked up and read straight through. Um, I think both books took me about uh, two weeks to read. So I just divided up the total number of pages over 14, you know, 14 days. And I read that many pages each day. And then if I had extra time, I read other things like this and whatever else. Um, Forever Amber, I don't think I paced myself. I just read through it in all the free time. And it took me about two weeks, partially because part at the end of week one, I was not super enjoying the story. And so it kind of started slowing things down, which I think is why I fell off being able to fit in. Uh, once an eagle. So I kind of wish I had have put <laughs> Forever Amber on a timeline. Um, so that is how I handled those two books. I very freely DNF'd mammoths if I needed to, or spread them out over a longer period of time. Um, and that's kind of how I approach reading longer books. But in the month of March, I did finish six books total. So these five books you see here, as well as the audiobook that I read of um, the waters. You can see that of all the books that I read this month, I finished two mammoth books. And in total, the number of pages of books that I read totaled 3,616 pages. So I think having gotten two mammoths in, that's really not that bad, especially since my goal every month right now is to read about 3,000 pages. So I got well over that. And I hope you can see that that does leave you room to read longer books while also getting other books in. Um, and I am also in the middle of a seventh book. So I don't think that is bad at all. I don't really care about how many books I read in a month, but I just give myself a page challenge just because that keeps me reading as opposed to doom scrolling or wasting time doing other things that I don't really care about. <laughs> so that is it for today. Those are all the books that I read or attempted to read or, you know, except for the ones that have just completely fallen off. And that's it for me for the month of March. I am looking forward to April. My TBR video for April should already be out. And I will talk to you next time. Bye.